Hey everybody, it's Megan. As always, I hope all of you are doing well. Today is going to be an important one. I am going to be going over five things that I have learned since I started my Louis Vuitton collection, or should I say my Louis Vuitton luxury collection, because my collection does expand outside of Louis Vuitton. Hopefully you guys will leave this video with some insights, some information that you do not have before you watch this video. Before we jump right into it, I'm going to throw it out there as I typically do. In case you have not joined my YouTube luxury community, I kindly invite you to do so by clicking on that subscribe button you see located right down there below on your screen and also by clicking that notification bell you'll be notified every time I upload a video. So I guess I'll just start off by letting you guys know that when I started my collection I really do wish that I had known some of the things I'm going to let you guys know in this video. The first thing I would like to share and I don't think you guys are going to be shocked by this because I think a lot of you guys are familiar with my collection is how addicting these bags pieces of luxury truly are. I think you guys can tell I have a little bit of a thing for Louis Vuitton. No, I definitely have a big thing when it comes to Louis Vuitton. I can pretty much say I've always had a thing with Louis Vuitton. It's just I have not always been able to afford Louis Vuitton throughout my life. So like I said, I learned that Louis Vuitton is very, very addicting, especially because Louis Vuitton is constantly coming out with new releases, always what's to be considered the latest and greatest. And yeah, I guess you could say I'm a little bit of a sucker when it comes to that. Yes, I am. But that's okay. And by the way, uh, if you guys notice that the sun is coming in and out, apologize for that. It's because it's a partly cloudy day and it has a mind of its own. It really does. But yeah, I've really just learned that Louis Vuitton comes out with beautiful collections all the time. So I did say in the beginning of this year in one of my earlier videos that I was going to be more picky with my luxury bag purchases because I want to enjoy my pieces. I don't think it's the best idea to have a ton of bags that just sit on a shelf. It just doesn't make sense to me. I want to enjoy my collection. I truly do. I'll give you guys an example as to what I'm talking about here. So some of you are familiar with the Louis Vuitton Zippy coin purse wallet. Here is one which I absolutely adore. It's definitely a forever piece. It's not leaving my collection. This one is amazing as well. The Game On. So very cute. This one's never leaving my collection either. Here's the Midnight Fuchsia from the Spring in the City collection 2022. Never leaving my collection. I own other Louis Vuitton wallets but this is just an example. Say if Louis Vuitton were to come out with another limited edition Zippy coin purse wallet would I purchase it? Gosh, I really have to admit it would have to be mind-blowing because I just don't believe in all of these wallets just adding up and sitting on my shelf collecting dust. No, no, no. You can't laugh at me, okay? This is embarrassing, but here's one to match one bag. Here's two to match another bag. Here's three to match another. Here's four. You get the point. It can be very easy to overindulge in luxury once you begin. These are just some examples as to how Louis Vuitton luxury items can be so addicting. And by the way, you guys, I apologize. Mr. Sunshine is just trying to be kind and say hi. But again, you guys, the first thing I did learn when I started my luxury collection is how addicting these items truly are. And that's something to be cautious of because you want to be able to enjoy all of your pieces. You pretty much learn to only buy something that I really, really, really want. The second thing that I didn't even know existed when I started my collection was pre-orders and the importance of pre-orders. Now this is something I did have to learn the hard way. Let me give you guys an example. The Louis Vuitton Speedy 20. When I first saw this, I had seen pictures of it before its release, and I had an essay reach out to me and ask, would you like to pre-order this bag? I looked it over and I really thought to myself, no, I don't, because I'm not sure about this strap. I pretty much thought to myself, well, you know, when this bag is released, I'll see it in person. If I really, really like it, then I'll get it. Well, you know what? The bag was released. Everybody got their pre-orders except me because I did not do the pre-order, and it was very, very hard to get. And of course, this is just a materialistic object who cares in the long run but to me I really wanted it so what did I do I headed over to a local Louis Vuitton store I paid for the bag and the way that that works I think Louis Vuitton still does this it's been a while since I've done it where you go into a Louis Vuitton location you pay for the bag and then you get the bag when it comes in and the way that it works with pre-orders is you never know I think there are a lot of bags that are pre-orderable and then when they are released you can easily get a hold of them and then sometimes the Louis Vuitton is going to release a bag like the mini bum bag and then it comes out and it's very hard to get. So, you know a lot of you guys did reach out to me saying that you were trying to get this bag. Many reached out saying that they did get this bag after trying a long time. When it comes to pieces being released we really don't know what's going to sell out immediately and what's not going to sell out immediately. So I would advise you of this if there is a Louis Vuitton piece that you are interested in and it is pre-orderable I would highly suggest to go ahead and do it. You can always return the bag and if you feel that you would enjoy the bag go for it because you just 
just never know if it's going to be sold out. A lot of you may be thinking to yourselves, well, I don't know how to pre-order. I don't even know which bags are available to pre-order when they are pre-orderable or when they're upcoming to be pre-ordered. I'll let you know this. It'd be a good idea to maybe get an Instagram account if you're not on Instagram, because there are two people that are great for letting you guys know upcoming releases. One, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of, Foxy LV. She's amazing. The other one, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll just spell it out. M-F-O-E-M-P-H-O dot L-V. She's great too. She's always posting new releases between her and Foxy LV. You guys will get a good idea as to what's coming with Louis Vuitton. And also, if you don't have a good Louis Vuitton sales associate, let me tell you, there is the most wonderful girl on Instagram. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I'm fortunate to have a lot of Louis Vuitton locations. Some of them have amazing sales associates so kind always so sweet whenever i go in there but i do my pre-orders and i order most of my bags really with this girl on instagram because she's just amazing and her instagram name if you're not familiar with her yet is lvx val her name is val and she's also great to follow on instagram because she's always showing new releases after their release you'd really enjoy her content she's also just a great louis vuitton client advisor to have so highly recommend following her if you are on instagram if not i would think about opening up an account with instagram for sure <laughs> especially if you like Louis Vuitton. The third thing I learned after I started my collection is how important it is to investigate a piece before you purchase it. And did I learn this the hard way? Absolutely, I did. Whenever you purchase a luxury item, you really do need to investigate that piece. When I didn't know much about Louis Vuitton, I would order from a store and the item would just be sent to me. And the problem with that is a few times, for example, with the On The Go and the Victoire, they were sent to me with very bubbled canvas. And I definitely needed to exchange did and got the perfect bag but the thing that i learned is it's very important and don't be shy to ask for pictures if you are ordering from a store a specific client advisor they're usually very very happy to do it i've never come across anybody that's not happy to do it that'll definitely help you from going through the hassle of exchanging the piece now an example i can give you guys is not louis vuitton it's ysl but basically i had gotten the small lulu bag with the black leather and the gold hardware remember i had purchased the lulu in the beige with the antique gold gold hardware and loved it and thought to myself I would really like this one so I let the sales associate know that and I basically just trusted that person to give me the perfect bag and unfortunately you know I would say about a month and a half two months later I'm looking down at the bag and I see a lot of bumps now I know leather is very different and it's going to depend on the bag and bumps can be very very normal and I'm really just not a picky person but when the bumps are so noticeable that when I look in the mirror from a distance and I could still see them I can't help but be a little bit turned off. Well, by the time I realized that it was too late to exchange the bag, I realized it was what it was and I was stuck with it. So from a financial point of view, I lost out on that because I did sell that bag to get another black bag, but I always have to look at the glass as half full rather than half empty. I did repurchase the YSL Small Lulu Black, but I decided to get the black on black hardware, which I actually like a little bit more than the black and gold. So it did actually work out in my favor. But lesson learned to always look over a bag before you walk out of the store and if you do walk out of the store just make sure that you check on the bag within a month just make sure it lines up with everything that you want because again after those 30 days goes by you just can't do anything about it so definitely a lesson learned a little bit the hard way because I took a loss on it but at the same time I didn't because I got the one that I really really wanted again got to think positive of course but yeah it definitely was a lesson learned and checking the piece out obviously doesn't only apply to bags here's another example for you guys I had purchased this. I do believe this is a Louis Vuitton get ready cap. If I'm incorrect, I will definitely correct that within the video. But when I saw this, when I got home, it was about two, three weeks later, I had it on display, but I hadn't used it. So I went to use it and I saw a huge bump right in the canvas. It literally was like bump. And when I felt it, it was just this hard lump. And I thought to myself, oh no, it would be one thing if this hat costs, you know, $25, $30. That's one thing. But when it's around, you know, seven, $800, you definitely deserve to be getting what you're paying for. And that's why it's really just so important to inspect every piece. You don't want to learn the hard way like I did with the small Lulu. So just take it from me and my bad experience. I've been through it already. You guys don't want to go through it. Make sure you inspect that piece. Now, the fourth thing I have learned since starting my Louis Vuitton luxury collection is how Louis Vuitton repairs work. So obviously it's very important to take care of our bags, right? I did do a video explaining how I take care of my bags and keeping them in pristine condition. If you guys are interested, please check it out. I also have it linked within the description box below. But no matter how much you try to take care of your bags, sometimes things just happen. For example, one of my most special 
special bags that I have in my collection. My Mon Mono Neverfull, please don't ask me what happened to it because I will never be able to give you an explanation. I don't know. All I know is I walked in to use my bag one day and this was not even long after I had purchased this bag, which was about two and a half years ago. And I go to grab my bag and I look at the handles and there was some sort of glue, I don't know what, but it was just this blue weird stuff all over the handles and on the side of a shadow right here. And I just thought to myself, oh no, because I think a lot of you guys know, I have mentioned that these bags, the Mon Mono bags that I own, hold a lot of sentimental value because my dad always called me Meg. And when I look at them, it always makes me think of him. I was very, very close to him. And it just makes me think of him saying my name and it makes me happy. So when I saw that on this bag, I was very, very sad. I basically had no idea how repairs work with Louis Vuitton. So I reached out to my client advisor and he was so kind and basically said, don't worry about it, that can be replaced. And he asked me, did you get it on the canvas? And I said, no. And that's when I learned that canvas cannot be replaced. So I did get, as you guys can see, the leather replaced. They did a beautiful job. And that is when I learned that yes, Vachetta leather, Demira Ben leather, and different parts such as, say for example, something happened to the gold hardware of your bag, these are all replaceable things that Louis Vuitton will do for you. However, the one thing that Louis Vuitton will not ever replace for you is canvas. That's why I am so, so, oh my goodness, you don't even know. I'm so happy that I did not get whatever that was, especially on this white part of the Neverfull. I don't even know how it did not get on there. Now that I think about it, it was pretty miraculous. So, so I would definitely advise you guys to always be very careful with your canvas. Thankfully, canvas is very forgiving and won't get, say for example, water marks. So again, thinking positively about it, we cannot replace the canvas, but it is good that the canvas is very, very durable. And for me, I really just enjoy my patina to happen very, very slow. So in time, I know for a fact, especially with this bag, obviously it's a forever bag. In time, I'll want to get the Vachetta replaced because I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm just not a fan of the dark, 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 super dark Vachetta. I don't like it. I remember I saw a girl with the Eva bag when I first started my collection. It was the monogram version. I was in Hawaii and that strap was so dark. It definitely looked like a Demi Ben strap. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do when my strap gets that dark? And yeah, I just basically learned in time, I will get it replaced. That's the wonderful thing about Louis Vuitton is that you can replace Fichetta in time. And like I said, when the time comes, when this bag gets too, too dark for my liking, I'll definitely be getting the Fichetta replaced. But just imagine if this bag did have very, very dark Fichetta, how amazing it would look brand new with brand new Fichetta. It would look like a brand new bag. So I really, really appreciate Louis Vuitton for their repairs. Also, this just popped to mind there was a girl who reached out to me who told me that she had lost a piece. I think it was the clochette to her Alma BB. And I told her, you know what, you could go on to the Louis Vuitton website and you can actually repair from there. You don't even need to do it with a Louis Vuitton client advisor. You could do it on the website. So if you guys are ever in a position where you lose a lock to your speedy, a clochette, something like that, a replacement part, those are replaceable. So the fifth thing that I have learned since I started my Louis Vuitton collection is how hard it can sometimes be to obtain a piece and different ways that I can go about obtaining it. And I'd like to give you guys two examples. The Pochette Accessoire. I just started my Louis Vuitton collection and shortly after getting this, I had gotten the Eva bag. And I thought to myself, they just look too similar. I really don't feel that I'll use this at all, so I'm just gonna sell it. And then I'm really glad I had a change of heart. I literally, let me give you this tip, stalked that website like you would not believe. This was so hard to get a hold of and I think a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about with this piece, how hard this was to get a hold of. But I stalked and I stalked and I stalked and stopped. And one day, one beautiful day, I was on the website and I saw place and cart. And let me tell you, I never checked out as fast as I checked out on the website that day. I was very happy that I got this piece. It was only $525, which makes me just add a little bonus in here. Something that I've learned that just came to mind, price increases. I did not know about that when I started my luxury collection. No, I did not. I had no idea that when I bought my first Speedy, how much it could go up in price over the course of five years. Had no idea that price increases were a part of luxury fashion houses. Well, now I know and I'm glad actually that I bought a lot of the pieces when I did buy them. Now this card holder right here sticks out in my mind because it's the same situation as the Pusha Accessoire, stock the website. So what you could do, number one, is stock that website to get a piece that 
you're interested in. Number two would be checking store inventory. That is a huge one. Now, a lot of you guys may be familiar with client services. And you may be familiar with the way that they work. Maybe you're not. Well, I'll fill you in. Say, for example, you're on the Louis Vuitton website and an item is completely unavailable and you call client services and they say, oh, we see it at this specific Louis Vuitton store. So if you're interested, we'll email them and they'll contact you. Well, the problem with that is I've done that and most of the time they don't call you back because obviously Louis Vuitton is doing business and they're working with people already at the store. Something that I have learned that is absolutely amazing and worked for me just this Christmas actually is to go on the website and check store availability. And when you check store availability, check for department stores. That's going to be key because maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't. If you try calling a freestanding Louis Vuitton boutique store, you're going to get client services. But if you get a hold of a department store, say for example, Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale, Saks Fifth Avenue, Nordstrom, well, then you're getting a hold of the department store. And the wonderful thing is you could just be connected to the Louis Vuitton boutique store inside of that department store. Does that make sense? So if you do see a specific item on the website and you you see it available at Bloomingdale's, Neiman Marcus, any department store, Nordstrom, Saks Fifth Avenue, you're going to want to call that department store and ask to be connected to Louis Vuitton. I did do that with this beautiful item. I did this last minute for Christmas. I did nudge nudge to my husband <laughs> with this beautiful Pochette Matisse East West. This was available at Bloomingdale's in San Francisco. So let's just say, for example, you were in my situation. You really wanted this Pochette Matisse East West in the bicolor. You went on the Louis Vuitton website. You saw that it was available. You checked store inventory at the Bloomingdale's. Well, what would you do in that situation? You're just going to call Bloomingdale's, ask to be connected to that Louis Vuitton. And when you get a hold of someone, just say, Hi there, I was on the Louis Vuitton website and I saw that you guys have the Pochette Matisse East West by color. Is there any way you can double check to see if you have it? And then they'll go to check to see if they have it. And if they do, they come back and they tell you. And most likely it'll be a yes. And then you're going to want to ask them for pictures of the bag. Like I said in the beginning of this video, if you just kind of trust the process and order this bag, you may be very disappointed when you get a bag that may have dents in it or flaws within the leather something like that so maybe something wrong with the chain best bet is to ask for pictures and don't be shy to ask for pictures of the interior you can even ask where the bag was made truly i've never felt like i was bothering a client advisor in any way to ask those questions they've always been very kind about it and i have ordered many and i do mean many louis vuitton pieces that way that also may be a good way to find a new sales associate for you you never know that's for sure but i can say this i've had wonderful experiences basically every single time I've ordered through a department store. So I guess that makes five things that I've learned since I started my Louis Vuitton luxury collection. Hopefully you guys did receive some type of new information that you did not know before. And what would really be wonderful is if you guys happen to have some advice to share with other people, any other type of helpful information since you started purchasing luxury bags. I'm sure everybody would appreciate it. I know I definitely would. Also, I always love hearing from you. All right, you guys, now's the time in the video where I'm going to completely transition topics as I typically do from speaking about luxury to something that's definitely more insightful, meaningful, and inspirational. Title of today's message is Beauty for Ashes. Throughout life, we're all going to have wonderful, amazing experiences. And throughout life, we all are going to experience hardships and difficulties. And I truly believe that some of the worst hardships we can go through is losing somebody that we truly love. That's just something that's a part of life that we really just cannot avoid. And of course, there are other type of hardships that we're going to endure. Say, for example, losing a relationship that meant a lot to you, or perhaps somebody that betrays you that you really trusted and loved very, very much. These are not easy times that we go through, but it's so important to remember that God sees all. Nothing can be hidden from him. And the greatest example of that is in the first book of the Bible, the story of Adam and Eve. I think a lot of you guys are familiar with that story where they try to hide what they did from God and he let it be known there is nothing that can be hidden from God. God was the same then as he is today. He sees everything. And for what you have been through that is very, very difficult, he has payback in store. And how wonderful it would be if we could just fast forward our lives sometimes and see what that payback is. God is so miraculous. God is so amazing that he knows how to make the impossible possible. He knows the desires of your heart and he knows how to do his very best to repay you for what the enemy has stolen from your life. But it really can be too easy to be complacent and just kind of sit 
sit on the sidelines of life and not activate our faith. It's very important for me to emphasize how important our faith is, especially during the trials of our life, because it is during those trials that we show God that we trust Him and know within our spirit that He is somehow, some way going to make up for what you've been through. And when we show God our faith, we are walking in faith, basically walking in faith and not by sight. It is seeing the unseen and believing that, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that it is real. Nobody ever said that life is going to be easy, but it definitely is very, very beautiful. If you can look back on your life and think about those miraculous times, times that money could just not buy, because it's truly the things that cannot be bought that are the best things in this life. Things such as your loved one's health, your health, things happening in such a way that you have no control over, but it works out in your favor. These are wonderful things that money cannot buy. You go through trials and tribulations in your life and you go through them with a very faith-filled spirit, God is going to show out in the most amazing ways that you could have never dreamed possible. And I speak on this because I have truly lived through this. And oh my goodness, has God showed up in ways that I could never have imagined. So much so, there just is no denying it was the hand of God at work in my life. Because when it comes to certain things happening in your life, certain cards that are dealt in your life that you know you can't make happen on your own, only God can, that's exactly what He's done for me in my life. And that's exactly what He has planned for you. He definitely works in His his own timing, but that time will definitely come. And it's not like I've just experienced his wonderful goodness just one time or two times. I've literally seen it time and time again. But really in the last year, oh my goodness, he has just blown my mind <laughs> by what he's done in my life. So it would be really wonderful if you could stay encouraged during the hard times of your life and just know that better days are always coming. When you have a bad day, remind yourself tomorrow is another day. It's a fresh new day. Things will always get better. Major key to God really showing out in your life is to be faithful during the storms of your life and after the storms of your life and understanding that he is always present with you during those storms when you feel like you're just so alone you are not alone you are never alone he is with you all the time so i would just encourage you guys to stay faithful and to just love on god a lot and talk to him whenever you want to in your free time tell him the desires of your heart i mean he knows them but it's a good thing to talk to him to conversate with him to really grow in your relationship with him i mean the closer you are to him the easier it is to walk through this life with a faith-filled spirit. Please always remember that when you're going through a hard time in your life, God is with you, He is by your side, and He has payback on the way for you. You just need to be patient, and you just need to show God through your heart how faithful you are by just trusting in Him and knowing that He's working behind the scenes in your life, fighting every single battle that needs to be fought on your behalf. He loves you so much. He wants you to trust in Him. When you're experiencing difficulty, when you're going through the hardships after the hard hardships, all you need to do is trust in him. And I promise you, he's going to show out in the most amazing ways that you never dreamed possible. He has beauty for ashes. So that is what I have to say on that topic of beauty for ashes. If you guys happen to have any comments or questions on that topic and or any comments or questions, gosh, they're such different topics, aren't they? <laughs> any comments or questions on the five things I wish I knew before I started my Louis Vuitton luxury collection, please do leave those in the comment section below. I already filmed my next video and I have a very very good inclination that you guys will like it. So if you did make it to the end of this video, of course, I greatly thank you until my next, which I'm very much looking forward to. You guys take care and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Bye.